four things that I do if I were the devil. I'm not sure that I actually like that sentence. Nevertheless, do you remember when Paul Harvey did something different? If I were the devil, I, I listened to that recently. Wow. If I didn't know better, I'd say that he were a prophet, but I know that there aren't prophets who can foretell the future. Nevertheless, wow, was he ever accurate. Let's see what Jason Bradley would do if he were the devil. And number one, diminish the spirit's influence. Remember, my conservative friend, the Holy Spirit isn't just for charismatics anymore. The Holy Spirit is not a force. He is the third person of the Trinitarian Godhead, and yet he is an active force in this world for two groups of people. The unsaved, he convicts them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. When the word is proclaimed, he saves them by his power. The second group of people in which the Holy Spirit is actively working are in the lives and hearts of the believer, growing us in holiness, sanctifying us, teaching us to love Jesus more, and his power, to be specific and precise, it can never be thwarted. And yet, the Holy Spirit works through the proclamation of his word and the application of his word. So if you were the devil, how might you have the Holy Spirit's power influenced? This from Mr. Bradley. Maybe I'd make ministry a game for professionals. Oh, if I could encourage ministry to be done like a job by highly educated experts, they'd probably forget pretty quickly that the church was birthed by a largely uneducated group of spirit-empowered ne'er-do-wells. Everyone else would be content to show up at church once a week as spectators. Can a pastor be well-educated? Frankly, he should be. Let's remember that while the disciples were not formally educated, they were not exactly ne'er-do-wells. They were just hard-working guys. But don't forget, they basically had a three-year seminary education. They were well-learned in the scriptures about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the rabbi, with whom they spent, give or take, three years learning from him. So a pastor should be educated like the disciples, but that is not Mr. Bradley's point. The point is that when education becomes the thing, it's all about learning, storing up more knowledge. In fact, I was talking to somebody recently, actually during the break, we, we were talking about the lengthy conversation yes. that we just had, and you were talking about A.W. Pink. Yes, I was talking about A.W. Who Pink. said what? Who said it's not good enough just to know these attributes about God or these truths about Scripture if it doesn't apply to your life and affect Bingo, you. bingo. That is a ditch. And it's not simply the erudite who can fall into it. We all can. You learn stuff, you learn stuff, you learn stuff, but you never really grasp stuff. You never ponder it, dare I say, meditate on truths so that it affects you and changes you and softens you and sweetens you. When education, even theological truths, become the high watermark, the devil likes that. If I were the devil, and number two, I'd turn the church against the culture. Oh. Oh, have you heard anything about a culture war that we've been told to engage in? The devil likes that. It probably would be as simple as ramping up their moral outrage at the depravity around them. This would help them forget that their battle isn't against people, but against spiritual forces. I'd encourage them to reduce people to stereotypes and generalities. Once they reduce people to abstractions, they'd quickly forget that it is these people that Jesus passionately loves and died to save. Is there a culture war going on? 
sure, in a sense. Is that the battle in which we are to be engaged? Absolutely not. When you and I engage like a Fox News host, when we argue with, rant against, and you can almost feel the anger pouring out of them at their disdain for somebody with a different worldview. Congratulations. When we sound like that, the devil loves it. Uh, number three, a thing uh, the devil loves to do, encourage the wrong power model. I just remind them that if they banded together in some sort of moral majority, they could influence the laws that affected those outside of their influence. They could be stronger than any special interest group and could spread the principles of Christ's kingdom with a top-down power over model. I'd whisper in their ear, why take up the cross when the scepter would be so much more effective? All the world needs is for the right people to be in control, right? Wrong. My kingdom is not of this world. If I wanted my people to take over Washington, I'd tell them to do so. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here a bit, but you get the point. Jesus could reign in any capital he chose right now. It is not his desire. It's like pff, nothing to it. To knock an emperor off of his throne and sit on it. He created the emperor. He created the throne. He created the nation. He created the entire planet that it sits on. That's nothing to him. He desires something greater to save sinners. If I were the devil number four, I'd confuse true worship with nationalism. Um, this is... It's not letting up. <laughs> oh, why don't you just read it? I'm going to take a little yes. break here. All right, go ahead. Christians are supposed to identify themselves with the kingdom of heaven and cast a wry eye at the way the enemy manipulates empires. So if I was Satan, I'd try and convince them that their country was unique. It's a Christian version of an empire. Once they saw their country as the lone Christian nation, they'd excuse inexcusable behavior. <laughs> All righty then. Let's all remember, say it together, America is not Israel. America is not Israel. America is not Israel. Thank you for watching our daily clip. If you have ADHD, this was probably just enough for you. But if you don't and you would like to watch the entire episode, you can do that by visiting wretched.org. All of our programs are now archived. They're cataloged, they're organized. You can search for subjects where you want to learn about a particular issue all for free because of our gospel partners, their ongoing monthly support. It allows us to keep doing this every single day. So if you believe that what we do here has any benefit for you, would you please consider becoming a gospel partner and support us monthly? Please visit wretched.org. Unless, of course, you do have ADHD, which means then you probably weren't watching all of this because you were distracted doing something else. I, you know, sometimes I get distracted too. It's the craziest thing because I'll be watching TV and it's Monday night football and I'm thinking, didn't they used to do this on Sunday? But then again, we used to have church on Sunday. Those were really good, weren't they? Because potlucks, oh, I love the potlucks. There's meatloaf, there's jello molds.